Diddy's son, Christian, AKA King Combs, is now being sued, just like his father is. Uh, a woman- I expect them to go to the grand jury very soon to get an indictment. Ironically, those video servers now use to criticize law enforcement. Misa not holding back in her caption, calling out the quote, militarized force used against- Sean Diddy Combs finds himself embroiled in yet another legal dispute. As a new civil lawsuit alleges his son, Christian King Combs, sexually assaulted a woman aboard a luxurious super yacht chartered by the Bad Boy Entertainment co-founder back in late 2022. I believe he was a coward. There's no way he should have let that happen to his kids. The authorities came up with enough evidence to go into a judge by using the civil cases that has came upon him. The accusations come from Grace Omar Kay, who has joined the chorus of voices accusing the business mogul amidst an ongoing federal investigation into sex trafficking allegations. Omar Kay, a former steward on the Victoria's ship, claims that Christian Combs, a 26-year-old rapper, drugged and sexually assaulted her during a December 2022 incident aboard the charter boat. This incident allegedly took place during what was purported to be a wholesome family excursion, but according to Omar K, descended into a hedonistic environment. Um, and this woman claims that's when he continued to try and sexually assault her, trying to force her to give him oral sex. Somebody eventually came in, she claims, and interrupted the whole thing, and she was able to escape it. Uh in response, the Combs team swiftly dismissed the allegations as another attempt by the accuser's attorney, Tyrone A. Blackburn, to smear their reputation. They characterized the claims as just another lewd and meritless claim filled with what they describe as manufactured lies and irrelevant facts, a pattern they claim to have grown accustomed to from Blackburn. Uh, and this is kind of similar in nature to the lawsuit that Diddy is facing from, from one Rodney Jones. And interestingly, Rodney Jones is actually crucial to this lawsuit as well. This According to court documents filed in Los Angeles County Superior Court on Thursday, Omar K, who was 25 at the time of the alleged assault, provided dinner and drink service on the yacht from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. She also alleges witnessing partying and drug use among a revolving door of suspected sex workers and A-list celebrities during her time on board. These details paint a troubling picture of the atmosphere aboard the vessel during the alleged incident. Grace Omar K has leveled serious accusations against Christian Combs, one of Diddy's offspring from the late Kim Porter, in a lawsuit that spans sexual assault, sexual harassment, and emotional distress. The legal action seeking unspecified damages and a jury trial also names Diddy, 54, as a co-defendant. He faces allegations of premises liability due to his leasing of the yacht and purported full control over staff and premises. Additionally, Diddy is accused of aiding and abetting his son in the alleged assault and orchestrating a subsequent cover-up that led to Omar K's termination in May 2023. Omar K paints a distressing picture of the environment aboard the yacht, describing it as rife with unlawful drug use, sex work, and chaos. She alleges that Diddy fostered an extremely hazardous atmosphere where staff were treated disrespectfully and suspected sex workers were sprawled unconscious about the vessel. Omar K. further claims that it was difficult to discern which bottles of alcohol were laced with drugs, leading to situations where women aboard the yacht would panic or pass out after consuming what they believed were spiked drinks. The lawsuit was filed by Tyrone Blackburn, who is also representing Rodney Lil Rod Jones in a separate sexual harassment and assault case involving Diddy's inner circle including Diddy's son, Justin Dior Combs, and actor Cuba Gooding Jr. Omar K., alleges witnessing inappropriate touching by Diddy and Gooding, echoing claims made in Jones's lawsuit. In response to the allegations, Blackburn stated, Like father, like son, highlighting what he perceives as a pattern of depravity within the Combs family. He commended Omar Kay for her bravery in coming forward, emphasizing the importance of fighting against sexual harassment and assault. However, the Combs legal team directed their focus towards Blackburn, labeling the accusations as lewd and meritless, and accusing Blackburn of improper behavior in filing cases for media attention and quick settlements. They intend to file a motion to dismiss the lawsuit, echoing recent criticism from a federal judge regarding Blackburn's litigation tactics.
Court documents describe Grace O'Marquet as a European Caucasian female who worked as a stewardess in the yachting industry since 2018. O'Marquet had intended to dedicate her career to hospitality and the yachting industry. However, as stated in her complaint, those aspirations were shattered due to the ongoing trauma resulting from the assault she endured. The incident occurred around December 28, 2022, just days before Diddy was set to host a lavish New Year's Eve bash aboard the ship, which was out at sea. Omar Kay recalls working the late shift on the yacht when Christian Combs, who typically stayed at a nearby villa on shore, boarded heavily intoxicated, a blend of narcotics and alcohol evident in his demeanor. In the studio, where Rodney Jones was also present, Omar Kay found Christian's behavior toward her particularly inappropriate. Despite feeling reassured by Jones's presence, Christian persisted, urging Omar Kay to take a shot of tequila which she suspected was spiked. Initially brushing it off, Omar Kay soon sensed a shift in the atmosphere, describing it as sinister. The situation escalated rapidly. Omar Kay recounts Christian forcefully grabbing her arm, insisting she take another shot. Subsequently, she alleges enduring physical assault, detailing unwelcome touching on her legs, breasts, anus, and vagina, along with attempted kisses on her neck, face, and hands. Amidst the blurred timeline, Omar Kay mentions Diddy's insistence on Rodney Jones recording the events. This led to the acquisition of an audio recording of the alleged incident, submitted as evidence in Omar Kay's case. The transcript of this recording, included in the complaint, captures Omar Kay's attempts to leave while Christian obstructs her, disregarding her protests against his advances. After managing to leave the scene, Omar Kay recounts Christian's persistence in refusing to return to shore and demanding accommodation on the yacht, further exacerbating the distressing ordeal. Omar Kay recounted a harrowing experience where she accompanied Christian to the cinema, commonly used as an additional sleeping area, only to find herself allegedly trapped. She vividly described Christian's transformation into a physical and extremely aggressive presence, cornering her and allegedly subjecting her to groping despite her attempts to resist. The situation escalated further when Christian reportedly exposed himself and attempted to coerce her into performing oral sex. Omar Kay fought back fiercely, and her colleague's unexpected arrival startled Christian, allowing her to escape. The aftermath of the assault left Omar Kay with serious bruises, documented in images submitted with her complaint. She emphasized that she did not consent to any of the assault or misconduct, alleging that she was drugged and intoxicated by Christian during the ordeal. Seeking help, Omar Kay approached the yacht captain the following morning, only to face further distress. She claimed he not only rebuffed her complaint, but also failed to show compassion or investigate the incident, instead suggesting she had voluntarily engaged in partying with the guests, an assertion she vehemently denied. Despite the traumatic experience, Omar Kay found herself assigned to work in close proximity to Christian, personally serving him while he remained aboard the yacht. She further alleged that the captain received a substantial tip from Diddy, presumably to deter any action in her favor or to maintain silence regarding the incident. Omar Kay laid blame at Diddy's feet, accusing him of fostering an environment of debauchery aboard the yacht. She claimed that Diddy neglected to implement safeguards against excessive drug use, drinking, or the presence of purported sex workers. According to Omarke, Diddy's actions created an unsafe environment where Christian and his friends felt emboldened to behave recklessly, mimicking the behavior they observed from the mogul himself. The alleged assault described by Omarke had profound ramifications on her mental health, as well as her personal and professional life. According to the lawsuit, she asserted that following the incident, her mental well-being plummeted, leading to debilitating anxiety, panic attacks, and even severe suicidal thoughts. Omar Kay also claimed that the emotional toll manifested in physical health issues, including the development of an eating disorder and epileptic seizures. In a separate legal development, attorney Blackburn faced criticism in a recent court filing by New York Judge Denise Cote. The judge referred Blackburn to the Grievance Committee for the Southern District of New York after repeated admonishments from another judge in a different case. Blackburn, known for his involvement in cases against celebrities, 
has pursued legal action against notable figures such as rappers Nicki Minaj, T.I., and his wife Tiny, as well as comedian Tiffany Haddish. Commenting on the latest lawsuit, Diggs remarked, This case, just like others, should be viewed on the merits and not against other attorneys as a means of distraction. Sean Diddy Combs's sons have lived a life surrounded by wealth and glamour due to their father's success. However, recent events suggest that two of them might be facing troubles reminiscent of their father's tumultuous past. Justin Combs, 30, and his younger brother, Christian King Combs, 26, found themselves briefly detained during a homeland security raid at their father's Los Angeles estate. Now they are entangled in legal issues of their own. Justin Combs faces allegations of involvement in a cover-up related to a shooting incident involving a friend known only as G at a recording studio in 2022, where Diddy was also present. On the other hand, Christian, a model and rapper, has been accused of sexual assault. These recent developments sharply contrast with the aspirations Christian expressed in 2018. He spoke of ambitious goals, including winning a Grammy, achieving platinum status, and providing luxuries for his family. Christian credited his mother, the late Kim Porter, for instilling in him a mindset of entrepreneurship. However, Porter's untimely death disrupted these plans, leaving Christian and his siblings to navigate their paths without her guidance. Diddy, born in Harlem and raised by a single mother in Mount Vernon, New York, faced adversity early in life following the loss of his father. In contrast, Christian grew up in a different environment, shielded from financial struggles despite his parents' separation in 2007. Meet Christian, also known as King, who's had quite the lavish upbringing, bouncing between a $13.5 million mansion in Alpine, New Jersey, a stunning $40 million residence in Los Angeles, and a cozy $3.7 million place in East Hampton. Chatting about his dad, Diddy, Christian shared how they share a strong work ethic. Every day you gotta keep progressing, he says. If you get nothing done, then you're backtracking. Apparently his dad's also a stickler for early mornings, always nudging him to rise and shine. And, that, and it's not just a good work ethic that Christian seems to have inherited. There's a love for fashion too. I always dressed myself, he mentions. My style is flashy, simple, and at the same time, sexy and smooth. Christian's Sweet 16 bash, dubbed Swervin 16, was an epic affair at One Oak in Los Angeles. With performances by Kendrick Lamar, French Montana, and Meek Mill, the guest list read like a who's who of Hollywood, including Lauren London, Khloe Kardashian, and Faith Evans. But the extravagance didn't stop there. Justin, Christian's brother, had an even grander Sweet 16 bash, complete with red drapes lifting to reveal him on a throne, dressed to the nines in Dolce and Gabbana. Both brothers are known to sport crowns for special occasions, and Christian even rocked one at the 2018 Met Gala. Speaking of recent events, just before Omar K's claim was filed, Christian shared snaps from his birthday bash, declaring, Can't stop, won't stop. Birthday vibes was lit. In the midst of recent legal turmoil, Justin's mom, Misa Hilton, isn't holding back either. Posting surveillance footage of the dramatic raid on Diddy's mansion, she questions the use of force. Enough is enough. Did Justin need several laser beams from firearms pointed at his chest? And rightfully so, expressing concerns about the safety of unarmed black men in such situations. During the raid, both Justin and Christian found themselves in cuffs on the lawn, but thankfully, they weren't arrested and were allowed to leave shortly after. Misa's poignant question resonates deeply. How many times have we seen young, unarmed black men not make it out of these types of situations alive? Amidst ongoing legal challenges and public scrutiny, Sean Diddy Combs finds himself once again under the spotlight due to his response to Eminem's accusations regarding the murder of Tupac Shakur. The controversy resurfaced recently, stemming from Eminem's 2018 diss track, Kill Shot where he implied Diddy's involvement in Tupac's death. Eminem's lyrics in Kill Shot reference the long-standing speculation surrounding Tupac's murder, insinuating that Diddy was somehow implicated. Diddy's reaction to these allegations was initially shared in a now-deleted episode of Joe Budden's YouTube series. During the segment, Diddy offered a cryptic response, 
suggesting that the matter had been privately addressed and stating, He said, There's nothing to say about it. It's in my hands. He wild. Subsequently, Eminem clarified that his lyrics were meant as a jest. Nevertheless, the controversy persisted, with rapper Jay Electronica defending Diddy against the accusations. Electronica warned Eminem to tread carefully and refrain from implicating Diddy in Tupac's death. It's worth noting that Diddy had a professional association with Tupac's rival, the notorious Big, who was also tragically murdered in a drive-by shooting. Over the years, Diddy has faced persistent online speculation and rumors regarding his potential involvement in Tupac's death which he has consistently denied. The unfolding events surrounding Sean Diddy Combs, a prominent figure in hip-hop and media, have garnered attention as his recent encounters with law enforcement intersect with a series of lawsuits alleging sex trafficking and assault. Last month, two of Combs' residences were raided by Homeland Security investigations and local police amidst the backdrop of these legal proceedings. However, Combs is not the sole high-profile individual entangled in this complex narrative. Several notable figures find themselves intertwined with law enforcement in various capacities within this case, whether as witnesses, suspects, or victims. Actor Ashton Kutcher, for instance, served as a witness in a murder trial involving a serial killer. Additionally, Combs' father tragically fell victim to a fatal shooting incident, adding a layer of personal tragedy to the unfolding events. Meanwhile, actor Cuba Gooding Jr., a co-defendant in one of the lawsuits against Combs, recently entered a plea deal in an unrelated criminal case. One of the key allegations in the lawsuits comes from music producer Lil Rod, who claims the existence of extensive recordings depicting Combs, his associates, and guests engaging in illicit activities. Legal experts anticipate thorough scrutiny of these alleged tapes by investigators to ascertain any potential criminal activities and the involvement of other notable figures. Despite the swirling controversies, Combs has vehemently denied all allegations leveled against him in the civil lawsuits. His upbringing, marked by the violent death of his father in an ambush shooting, has been cited as a motivating factor driving his pursuit of success through legitimate avenues. The intertwining of various personalities within this saga extends to figures like Gooding, who faced legal repercussions in a separate case, and rapper T.I., who is represented by Combs's lawyer in a related lawsuit. The legal landscape surrounding these events is further complicated by the involvement of attorney Sean Hawley, known for her defense of high-profile clients, including O.J. Simpson. Presently, Holly represents a plaintiff in a lawsuit accusing Combs of trafficking a minor. Even folks who aren't directly involved in the situation have some pretty surprising connections to the entertainment world. For instance, Al B. Sure, the singer who hinted that his health problems in 2022 might be linked to Combs, has a spokesperson whose son was cleared of a manslaughter charge in New York City in 2016. Then there's Kari Nordlinger, whose mom worked for the wife of New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio back then. Kari had a top-notch lawyer named Jeff Lichtman, known for representing big names like John Gotti Jr., drug lord Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, and now Combs' son, Justin Combs. Stevie J, a Grammy-winning music producer and a close friend of Combs, has been seen hanging out at Combs' Miami mansion recently. He's represented by Lizzie Grubman, a former publicist for Jay-Z, who did some time in jail after accidentally driving her Mercedes SUV into a crowd at a Hamptons nightclub in 2002. Then there's Kutcher, who reportedly thinks he might get subpoenaed in a federal investigation involving Combs. He had a friend who was killed by serial killer Michael Gargiulo, also known as the Hollywood Ripper, in 2001. Kutcher's also pals with Masterson, who's serving a long prison sentence for rape. Combs, a billionaire who's made a name for himself in hip-hop, fashion, booze, TV, and even acting, has had some rough patches along the way. There were violent incidents during his rise to fame, including a deadly stampede at a 1991 benefit event. He was also caught up in the East Coast versus West Coast hip-hop feud in the 90s, and in 1999, he was acquitted of charges related to a nightclub shooting that sent his protege, Shine, to prison. His old rival, Death Row Records founder, Suga Knight, is currently doing time in a California prison for manslaughter. 
Knight recently gave a chilling warning to Combs in a phone call from prison. He mentioned some secret room stuff and implied Combs could be in danger because of what he knows. Legends like Shakur and Notorious Big both died in drive-by shootings before the end of the 90s. Shakur was with Knight when they were attacked in Las Vegas. Biggie, whose real name was Christopher Wallace, died in the arms of one of Combs' bodyguards. The murders sparked all sorts of speculation and conspiracy theories for years. It wasn't until last year that Las Vegas police announced they had finally indicted someone for Shakur's murder. Back in 1990, Diddy kicked off his career as an intern at Uptown Records in New York. Fast forward, he founded his own label, Bad Boy Records, and the rest is history. Sure, he's famous for launching the careers of legendary artists like Notorious Big, Mary J. Blige, and Usher, but there's more to Diddy's wealth than just his musical talents. According to Forbes, Diddy's empire is estimated to be around $1 billion as of 2022, and that's not just from banging out beats. He's got his fingers in various pies, from clothing lines to alcohol brands and even cannabis. Let's break it down. Music has definitely been a cash cow for Diddy. His label was raking in around $130 million annually at its peak, and his own tracks and albums have brought in over $100 million in royalties alone. Remember No Way Out? That album went straight to number one on the charts and snagged Diddy a Grammy. But it's not all about music. Diddy's clothing brand, Sean John, is a force to be reckoned with, pulling in over $525 million a year. Plus, he's made savvy investments in other fashion labels like Zach Posen and Anise. Then there's his partnership with Diageo, the alcohol giant behind Kirok Vodka and De Leon Tequila. Reports suggest he was making a cool $60 million annually from that deal. And let's not forget his venture into the green scene with a hefty $185 million deal for cannabis retail stores and production facilities across the U.S. When it comes to homes, Diddy doesn't mess around. He's got two primary residences, one in sunny Miami and another in the bustling city of Los Angeles. But wait, there's more. According to Realtor.com, comma, he's got quite the collection of multi-million dollar properties scattered around. In 2021, he snagged a jaw-dropping waterfront property in Miami for a cool $35 million from none other than Gloria and Emilio Estefan. But get this, back in 2003, he scooped up the neighboring estate for $14.5 million, setting the stage for what Realtor.com describes as his very own compound. But that's not all. Diddy's also the proud owner of a $2.7 million condo in Miami and a jaw-dropping $39 million mansion in the City of Angels. And let's not forget about his previous properties in New York City, New Jersey, and Georgia. Talk about living the high life. Now let's switch gears to Diddy's foray into acting and investing. In the early 2010 S, he dipped his toes into the world of Hollywood, gracing the big screen in comedy flicks like Get Him to the Greek, and popping up on TV shows like Entourage, Hawaii 5-0, and It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. While we don't have exact figures on what he pocketed from these gigs, Get Him to the Greek did rake in a whopping $95.5 million at the box office. Fast forward to 2023, and Diddy's making moves in the business world yet again. This time, he's announced the launch of Empower Global, an online marketplace aimed at spotlighting black-owned businesses, a project he's dubbed as his vision of a modern-day Black Wall Street. In November 2023, singer Cassie, real name Cassandra Ventura, took decisive legal action by filing a federal lawsuit against her former partner, Sean Diddy Combs, alleging a distressing history of physical and sexual abuse during their relationship. The lawsuit detailed harrowing instances of abuse, including allegations of assault, coerced sexual encounters with others, and rape. Combs swiftly settled the lawsuit, yet this marked only the beginning of a series of legal challenges against him. Since then, three additional women and one man have come forward with similar accusations against Combs, ranging from sexual harassment to sex trafficking. The gravity of the situation intensified on March 25th, 
when federal agents conducted raids on Combs's properties in Miami and Los Angeles as part of a sex trafficking investigation. Combs has vehemently denied all allegations, maintaining his innocence and vowing to defend his reputation vigorously. Cassie's lawsuit, filed under New York's Adult Survivors Act, outlined a disturbing pattern of abuse and control allegedly inflicted by Combs over many years. She asserted that Combs exercised near total dominance over her life, from her career to her personal affairs, and subjected her to frequent physical violence and substance abuse. Additionally, she claimed that Combs forced her into sexual encounters with other individuals and raped her in 2018. In support of her claims, Cassie cited multiple witnesses, including her friend Tiffany Redd, who corroborated incidents of abuse. Despite Combs's denial and his legal team's dismissal of the allegations as fabrications, Cassie and Combs reached a settlement shortly after the lawsuit was filed. The terms of the settlement remain undisclosed, with both parties expressing a desire to move forward amicably. Cassie emphasized her appreciation for the support she received during this challenging time, stating, I want to thank my family, fans, and lawyers for their unwavering support. Meanwhile, Combs extended well wishes to her and her family, saying, We have decided to resolve this matter amicably. I wish Cassie and her family all the best. Love. Following the settlement, Liza Gardner filed a lawsuit on November 23rd, just before the expiration of the Adult Survivors Act. She alleges that she and a friend encountered Sean Diddy Combs and singer-songwriter Aaron Hall at an MCA Records event in 1990 or 1991. According to Gardner, they went back to Hall's apartment for an after-party, where she claims she was coerced into having sex with Combs and that Combs also assaulted her friend. Gardner states that the encounter left her shocked and traumatized and alleges that Hall later forcibly had sex with her. Gardner further alleges that Combs later attacked her again at her home, seeking her friend, who he believed might disclose the incident. In another complaint filed the same day, Joy Dickerson Neal alleges that in 1991, she reluctantly went on a date with Combs, who she claims intentionally drugged and sexually assaulted her after dinner. Dickerson Neal asserts that Combs recorded the assault and showed the tape to others. Although she did not immediately report the alleged assault, Dickerson Neal claims she eventually filed a police report with unspecified agencies in New York and New Jersey. She alleges that potential witnesses were too afraid to come forward due to fears of retaliation from Combs. A spokesperson for Diddy dismissed the claims of the two women as fabricated and accused them of exploiting the Adult Survivors Act. In a separate lawsuit filed on December 6th, referred to as Jane Doe, alleges that Combs, along with his longtime lieutenant Harve Pierre and a third unidentified assailant, gang-raped her at Combs's Manhattan recording studio in 2003, when she was 17 years old. The lawsuit alleges that Doe was trafficked across state lines from Detroit to New York City on a private jet, given drugs and alcohol until she couldn't consent, and then violently assaulted. Additionally, in February, Combs's former producer and videographer Rodney Lil Rod Jones filed a federal lawsuit against the mogul, alleging sexual harassment, drugging, and threats. Jones alleges that he was constantly subjected to unsolicited and unauthorized touching by Combs, and that on one occasion, he woke up naked and disoriented in bed with Combs and two sex workers, alleging that Combs drugged him. The lawsuit also alleges that Jones, in his role as Combs's videographer, recorded hours of footage and audio recordings of illegal activities, including drug acquisition, solicitation of sex workers, providing laced drinks to minors, and sexual assault. Jones's lawsuit names several other defendants, including Combs's son Justin, his chief of staff Christina Corum, Universal Music Group CEO Sir Lucian Grange, and former Motown Records CEO Ethiopia Habtamarium. Combs' lawyer, Sean Holly vehemently denied Jones's allegations, stating that they have overwhelming, indisputable proof that the claims are false. One lawsuit alleges that Combs groomed his accuser to facilitate interactions with his friends and leverage his celebrity connections. In a separate incident detailed in the suit filed by Rodney Lil Rod Jones, 
He claims to have experienced discomfort when actor Cuba Gooding Jr. allegedly assaulted him during an outing on Combs's yacht, engaging in unwelcome touching and advances. An amended version of the lawsuit filed later added Gooding Jr. as a defendant. The lawsuit further asserts that Combs's social circle enabled his behavior to gain access to celebrities, with Combs known for hosting lavish events attended by prominent figures from various spheres. While the complaint mentions affiliations with celebrities, including Prince Harry, it does not implicate them in any wrongdoing. The raids on Combs's properties on March 25th conducted by federal agents reportedly as part of a sex trafficking investigation, have drawn significant attention. The warrants are linked to allegations of sex trafficking, sexual assault, and illegal drug and firearm activities. Federal agents have interviewed several individuals, with more interviews anticipated as part of the ongoing investigation. In response to the raids, Combs's attorney Aaron Dyer criticized the use of excessive force and emphasized that Combs cooperated with authorities. Dyer also connected the raids to the lawsuits against Combs, characterizing them as a premature judgment fueled by baseless accusations. He reiterated Combs's innocence and commitment to clearing his name. Coinciding with the raids, one of Combs's associates, Brendan Paul, was arrested at Miami's Opa-Laka Airport on unrelated drug charges. Paul, described in Jones's lawsuit as Mr. Combs's mule, faces charges of possession of suspected cocaine and marijuana candy. However, these charges are unrelated to the raids on Combs's properties. That's all for the video, folks. Thanks for watching.